Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sohini and I'm a pre-med student at UCLA. Today, I thought it would be really fun if I went through some of the AAMC sample MCAT practice questions with you all and showed you basically my thought process as I logic my way through these problems. I think one of the biggest things I needed to improve on was just learning the logic of the test. And so hopefully, if you all watch me kind of go through these questions and see how I reason my way through both the answer choices and the questions themselves, it might help you a lot in the long run. Today, I'm just going to be going through the ChemPhys section because I don't want this video to be too long. ChemPhys was the section that I scored best on in the MCAT and was the one that I consistently scored highest on in all of my practice exams. And so hopefully I don't embarrass myself today. There's only three questions. I haven't seen them before. Um, and I'm going to go through and basically see if I can answer them properly the way I would on the MCAT. Cue split screen in three, two, one. Okay, so I'm going through right now. Um, and I will see that there is one passage and it looks like there's some kind of reaction or enzyme thing happening. And here's the thing guys, for chem phys, I noticed that a lot of the times you don't even really need to read the passage that closely. Go straight to the questions, especially for CP. For bio biochem, it's a totally different situation, but just trust me on this one. Go to those questions first and just see what you can answer without even really reading in depth the paragraph. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go straight to question one. Progress of reaction two can be monitored by observing what change to the IR spectrum of the product mixture. Okay, so all I really need to look at and go back in the paragraph is look at what reaction two looks like, and then I'm gonna hopefully remember my IR spectra, but a lot of it is just recall for information. You don't need to read that entire passage to know how to answer this question. Okay, let's go to reaction two. So Basically, it looks like compound three is turning into three other compounds, so four, five, and six, and it says it's an IDO catalyzed oxidation. I'm gonna assume that IDO is some kind of enzyme. Um, maybe it'll come up later, but it's not too important right now. We just know it's an oxidation reaction. And yeah, you can see that a bunch of carbonyls form in all of these compounds that weren't there originally in compound three. And so hopefully by the time you've gotten to your practice examples, um, you will have memorized the IR spectra. I know that I made a graph of like all of the different ones with the carbonyls and amines and double bonds and everything like that and kind of memorized the ranges where I would see those. Um, but carbonyls are the one that are the most kind of popular, I guess. They're the ones that are really obvious when you read any kind of IR spectra. And so I know that progress to progress of reaction to can be monitored by observing what changed the IR spectra. If we have compound three turning into four, three different compounds that all have carbonyls, there should be an appearance of a really sharp peak around the 17. Ow. <laughs> there should be an appearance of a really sharp peak right around the 1700 mark. So let's see if the answer choices have anything like that. So A says appearance of a broad peak at 3400. So to my memory, carbonyl peaks are really sharp, they're not really broad. Um, that's You'll see more broad peaks in the alcohol OH groups, if anything. Um, so I'm not gonna say A. Disappearance of a broad peak at 3400, I'm pretty sure carbonyls will make a sharp peak appear, so we're gonna cancel out B. Appearance of a sharp peak at about 1700 to 1750, that's in line with what we were saying. And the disappearance of a sharp peak at 1700 to 750, so D also sounds like it's not the right answer. So I'm gonna say C. Hopefully it's the right answer. And yeah, it is. And basically, the AMC will give you little rationales for why the answer choices are correct. If they ever don't make sense to you, because sometimes they're worded not the best way, I would always type in whatever sample question that you have into Reddit, for example, or just Google. Um, and the crowdsourced information that explains these questions help me so much. They go really in depth and they use language. It's a little bit more accessible to students who are learning the MCAT methods for the first time. Um, so yeah, recommend that. Okay, let's go on to number two. So number two says, the following kinetic parameters were obtained for the IDO catalyzed oxidation of compound 3 by H2O2 in the presence of LTRP. Okay, so right off the bat, they give us another entire chart that I don't even think was, yeah, wasn't even in that original passage. passage. Um, and so it just kind of goes back to the same thing where you don't really need to read those passages in depth in campus, so don't waste time. I promise you're going to be crunched for time on the first section anyway. 
Um, and so let's just go and read through what this chart is because I think that's all we're gonna need. Um, okay, so chart and then gives me the concentrations of this compound named LTRP and then they give me the KCAT. Okay, so KCAT, if I remember correctly, it's kind of almost a speed metric um, and it's K of catalysis. That's what the CAT stands for. If for some reason that you didn't know that, you didn't remember that in the test, you can always look at the units too and it gives you the unit as one over second. And so by that, you should also be able to kind of tell that it is some sort of speed metric of how fast that reaction is gonna go. So if I go down and I see that a low concentration of LTRP means a faster reaction or a higher KCAT, and a high concentration of LTRP gives me a slower reaction, LTRP to me sounds kind of like an inhibitor um, something in the reaction that's going to make it slow down and not happen as fast. Um, and yeah, let's see what the answer choices say. A says LTRP oxidizes the compound 3 directly. Um, so for kinetics, it doesn't tell you anything about the pathways of reactions. And so I don't think A would be a good answer choice to think about just because this chart tells you nothing about if it's oxidized, reduced, nothing like that. Um, in how it's like done directly because I know it's an oxidation but I don't know if it's being oxidized directly it doesn't really matter that's not what the chart is telling me B LTRP is oxidized instead of compound 3 again this chart tells me about the speed of reactions in relation to the concentration of LTRP B doesn't sound like the right answer choice either C LTRP does not interact with the enzyme so if LTRP didn't interact with the enzyme our chart right here would basically have the same number for KCAT regardless of what concentration of LTRP you had, right? Because if you increase or decrease the concentration of LTRP and it doesn't interact with the enzyme, it should have no effect on the speed of the reaction or the number that is KCAT. So C doesn't sound like an answer that would make sense either. And then D is the one that we were saying initially, LTRP inhibits the enzyme and that's a correct answer. So again, just want to drive home the point that you don't need to read the chem phys um, passages super in depth unless the question actually like directly references something that you need to go back and look at. Um, if anything, just focus on the diagrams, focus on the charts, and focus on reactions that they give you like that. Number three, and I think that's the last one actually, yeah, number three, okay. Which experiment can be used to show that the compound six is not formed sequentially from either compound four or compound five? Okay, so I'm gonna go back and look at reaction two that has all of those compounds and it says compound six is not formed sequentially from either compound four or compound five so this question sort of sounds like almost like an experiment analysis because they're asking you which experiment could you do to show that this does not happen right they're not asking you about something that they did in the experiment they're asking you to kind of think outside the box try to hypothesize what would happen if you did this hypothetical experiment. So let's go back and let's see. So they're asking, how would you know that compound six isn't formed sequentially from compound four and compound five? And I think based on the last two questions and what we know about this IDO catalyzed oxidation, IDO right here looks like an enzyme and um, enzymes aren't like used up in reactions. They're there just to kind of speed up the reaction or um, change the speed of it. And so I think what they're asking is would, so say compound three becomes compound four in this reaction. How do we know that compound four then doesn't again react with IDO and form compound six? Same for compound five. What if compound three becomes compound five through this reaction and IDO, and then compound five doesn't just use that same IDO and become compound six, right? How do we know that compound three is becoming compound four, five, and six all by themselves, right? Six isn't a sequential product of the creation of compound four or compound five. So how would you, how would you know that, right? Basically what I said is compound four, if that happened, compound four would just reuse the IDO enzyme and make compound six. That would be what sequential would mean. And so, how I would test to make sure that's not happening is I would then probably just like take out I compound four or compound five separately, right? Put them in like a little, I don't know, like a petri dish or like, I don't even know, like just a little cup or something. I'm not a chemist, sorry. Um, and drop in IDO and see if compound six forms from that, 
Um, if it does, if compound 4 and IDO makes compound 6, then yeah, compound 6 would maybe be a sequential product of compound 4 or compound 5. But if I drop an IDO into compound 4 and nothing happens, then I know that compound 6 needed compound 3 right here and IDO to be formed, so it's not a sequential product. And so let's see what the answer choices say. Um, a says conduct the reaction of compound 4 with, with compound 5 and identify the products. So this is definitely something that an answer choice that I would be drawn to. Um, but the thing is that the, this answer choice is asking if compound 4 and compound 5 react with each other to form compound 6. And that's not really what the question stem is asking. It's more asking about compound 6, is it being created from compound 4 and the enzyme sequentially. And so, oh, I did it again. B is saying, what if you oxidize compound 4 and compound 5 with IDO and identify the product? So that's more in line with what we were saying before. You drop in the IDO into compound 4 and compound 5 and see if compound 6 is formed from that. If it is, it's sequential. If it's not, then you probably would need compound 3 to create compound 6. So right now B is looking like a good answer. Um, reduce compound 6 without added catalyst and identify the products. Um, I don't really know why you would want to reduce compound 6 um, and identify the products, especially without the added catalyst. That doesn't really make sense because it's an IDO catalyzed reaction. You want that enzyme in there and also it would be much easier to just oxidize than go back and reduce if it's an oxidation reaction. So in my head that doesn't really make sense. And then D says conduct the reaction of compound 2 with H2O2 without added catalyst and identify the products. Yeah, compound 2 is in a completely different reaction, so that doesn't really even make sense. So D also doesn't sound like an answer that would make sense. So I'm going to go ahead and say B, and let's see if that's the right answer. Yeah, okay, it is the right answer. Yeah, so it's basically saying the same thing I did, that you want to double check and make sure that compound 6 is informed from a sequential enzyme mechanism. And so I guess the takeaway for this question would just be, remember that enzymes are not re used up in reactions, and so they are you know, present in solution even after products form, and you have to make sure that those products that are formed aren't then again reacting with the enzymes present in solution and forming even more products. That would be a sequential reaction. Okay, so I know I just did three questions, but um, hopefully that helped you a little bit in figuring out how AMC tests you in the logic. As you can tell, again, I'm going to say it one more time, I didn't even read the passage, right? I barely looked at the passage. All I really looked at were the reactions one and two and what they kind of, you know, did to the reactants and products. Everything I needed to know was either memory recall for ChemFizz and how to apply it, or it was already in the question stem, like question two, they gave me an entirely new chart. I never really had time to check most of my answers. So like for other sections, I could go back and check the, the questions I had flagged before. Canvas, I never had time, but I always ended up scoring the best on that section. And I think I would attribute a lot of that to this strategy of just going straight to the questions and making sure that you actually understand the information they are testing you on rather than blindly reading the passage. So if this was helpful to any of you, please leave a like and comment down below. I'm hoping to maybe do the other sections in future videos, maybe bio biochem next, for example. Um, cars would be kind of difficult um, just because I would have to read the entire passage. It can't BS it like I did for chem fizz. Um, but I think Psych and Socio and the Bio Biochem section would be kind of fun to do a YouTube videos on because the logic is really important in that. So thank you guys for watching. Please uh, subscribe if you want more videos about the MCAT, med school, just my life in general. Um, I finally finished secondaries the other day and I'm hoping to edit and put up my kind of vlog style video of how I went about my secondaries while they were all just piling in. So let me know if you want to watch that as well and I will see you in the next video. Bye!